Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. Tim has the night off. After days of warm temperatures and sunny skies, winter finally arriving in Siouxland. The big problem of the day, though, not the amount of snow, but the wind. The blowing snow reducing visibility on many roads. Highway 81 north of Norfolk to the state line closed due to zero visibility. Plows also pulled off the roads in northeast Nebraska. People in northwest Iowa advised not to travel at all tonight. In the Sioux City metro area, visibility low in places, but roads mostly remained visible and drivable. Several communities in Siouxland are reporting multiple accidents. Now, officials reminding people to use caution if they need to drive somewhere, but warning that Siouxlanders should stay off the roads unless it is absolutely necessary. The wintry weather impacting not just travel, but also causing some several downed power lines. Areas of Siouxland seeing power outages throughout the day. Hundreds of homes without power in Buena Vista County. And this morning, about 1,300 Sioux City residents had no power. As of news time, though, that number is at about 200 homes still left without power. Now, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson joining us. Many Siouxland counties still under winter weather advisories and blizzard advisories. So when are those set to expire, at least as of right now, Scott? Sophie, those should be expiring by 9 o'clock this evening. It looks like at that point the blizzard warnings are going to be allowed to expire from the National Weather Service. In the meantime, though, we do still have some very difficult travel conditions out there. Wherever you see the purple on your screen, that is where travel is not advised. That being from the Nebraska, South Dakota, and Iowa DOT. As you move further north toward I-90, that red area on your screen, that is where there are impassable roads in southwestern Minnesota. Looking at the radar picture now, it shows that the snow is continuing to creep off to the east. Some light snow showers out toward Highway 71. The visibility, though, still remains bad across most of Siouxland. Many sites reporting less than a mile of visibility with the blowing snow. Winds remain strong. Here's a look at our blizzard warnings. Again, those are going to be allowed to expire at 9 o'clock tonight. As you move further south, that's where a winter storm warning is still in effect for the Omaha Metro. We'll have more information on how much snow piled up in Siouxland today, and we'll take a look at some of those powerful wind gusts, too. That's on the 9 on 9 forecast in a few minutes. Sophie. All right, thanks, Scott. Well, several Siouxland cities currently under snow emergencies. Sioux City, Dakota City, and Storm Lake today releasing their emergency rules. Now, while the rules do vary, they all restrict parking in some form, and parking on emergency snow routes is prohibited. Vehicles parked in violation of emergency rules could be ticketed or towed. If you'd like, you could find your city's snow emergency rules posted on our website right now. That address on your screen, SiouxlandProud.com. And Siouxland facing dangerously high winds, as we mentioned today, with winds gusting up to 60 miles an hour. Driving turns difficult, of course, and this is especially true for truck drivers. KCAU 9 News reporter Lydia Vasquez shares how blizzard-like conditions impact drivers' schedules and how they manage to get through safely. I'm supposed to have this back St. Louis, 11 o'clock tomorrow. I'd be home for Christmas, but I probably ain't going to be home. Truck driver Trent Singleton says drivers are usually on a tight schedule, but with bad weather comes delays. If you can't make it to your point, me just got to call them rescheduled. Ain't no sense you killing yourself or anybody else. Just get off the road, you know, that's the main thing to do. For some truck drivers, high winds not only put them behind schedule, but also affect their bottom line. You're probably only going to go 45 mile an hour just because the wind's pushing you back. Uh, so you're definitely going to lose time there. I average about 5.9 miles per gallon, but in weather like this, I'll get about 4.7. And then if it's even stronger, it's going to be worse. So, yeah, sometimes if the load don't pay as well, it's not worth going out. Another trucker says if a trailer carries less weight, it puts the driver at a higher risk. We've got an empty trailer that we're hauling right now to go into our next shipper. That's even harder to do because the wind catches that trailer and it wants to take the trailer in a different direction than the truck's going. Elizabeth Pratt says semis can't slow down nearly as quick as smaller vehicles. That's why she says it's especially important for everyone to take extra precautions during stormy weather. In Sioux City, Lydia Vasquez, KCAU 9 News. Today's weather also causing a delay in garbage collection for some Sioux City residents. Those that live between 20th and 27th streets from Pierce Street to Court Streets asked to leave their cans out to be collected on Thursday. So tomorrow, additionally, residents that normally have their trash picked up on Fridays will have it collected now on Saturday because of the Christmas holiday.
Well, 2020 saw a record number of first-time gun owners and an uptick in gun sales as a result. With this skyrocket in sales, it is causing a ripple effect on the ammunition market. Brands like Federal and Spear and Remington reporting a year's worth of backlog on ammunition orders, leaving retailers hands tied when it comes to restocking their shelves for customers. But it is going to be a waiting game still. It's predicted that ammunition shortage could last until the summer of 21. We do have ammo and we have ammo for our range members, but we've had to limit it. Instead of just selling it to the public, we sell it to people who belong as range members out here, and that's helped. So that way we don't have to limit how many boxes, we just limit how many people have access to it. Coming up tonight at 10, KCAU 9 News speaks with the Sioux City Police Department to learn how their inventory has been impacted by this shortage. Today, Governor Pete Ricketts announcing that the state will be moving from their yellow to their blue phase in its response plan to coronavirus. This after the percentage of hospital beds taken up by COVID-19 patients continues declining below 15% for a seven-day rolling average. In the blue phase, selective surgeries resume without restrictions. An indoor gathering capacity goes from 50 to 75%. The measures take effect on Thursday. Taking a look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Siouxland, Woodbury County Health officials reporting 58 new cases and one additional death in 24 hours. 36 patients currently in hospital due to COVID-19. Meanwhile, Sioux County has 4,200 total cases and 41 deaths. In Nebraska, Dakota County officials confirming four COVID-19 fatalities today, along with 14 new positive tests. The county has recorded 157 confirmed cases over the past two weeks. And in South Dakota, Yankton County reports 282 active cases. Meanwhile, there are 122 active cases listed in Clay County. An Omaha man was diagnosed with COVID-19 and did have to be put on a ventilator for four weeks. Something doctors say few people survive, but as Michelle Bander reports, his family says he knows he is truly fortunate to be here. We got the call that he got put on a ventilator. I think it hit us that Maybe he wasn't going to make it. Greg Frost first started showing coronavirus symptoms around Halloween. He was like non-coherent. He couldn't keep his eyes open. Very weak. Methodist doctors admitted the 54-year-old MUD plant worker a few days later on November 3rd. It was really scary when we had to just drop him off at the ER. Like, they don't let you come in with the no visitors. But his family says Frost is a fighter. For the next 39 days, he battled the virus. Most of that time spent in the ICU, heavily sedated, and a medically induced coma on a ventilator. Once you hear, like, someone's going on a ventilator, you think life support, it's the end. You know, they're going to die. The ventilator is only used... Uh, as a last resort, as a life-saving maneuver. Dr. Hershberger says one in three people with COVID-19 on a ventilator don't make it. Frost's family didn't want him to become a statistic and waited, hoping he would wake up. Then, a month later on December 6th, now out of COVID-19 isolation, doctors told his wife it was time. I was scared, you know, but I also wanted to see the next step, yep, and be there with him. They were like, one, two, three, and out it came. I tell my patients, uh, you're going to be weak as a kitten after you're on the ventilator for a long period of time. Frost started breathing on his own with oxygen. He was moved to a skilled nursing facility December 11th. His wife says COVID took a toll on his body. His only health issue before, high blood pressure. We just can't wait till he gets to come home. Calling him their miracle, Frost's family says they'll be there, ready to help him get strong again. We will take any wins we can get when it comes to people surviving COVID uh, that require a ventilator. He's our angel on earth. <laughs> he wasn't ready to give up. Well, this Christmas is looking a lot different, of course, because of the pandemic. But there are some people who have found a way around gathering guidelines. We'll explain more coming up. And the blizzard conditions out there should get better as we travel into Christmas Eve tomorrow. It's going to be extremely cold on Christmas Eve. High temperatures in the teens. A slight weekend warm-up is on the way to Sioux Land. Your 9 on 9 forecast straight ahead. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Herber, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson, and Sports Director Jake Jones. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. 
Thanks for sticking with us tonight. Uh, a blustery night to say the <laughs> least. Uh, really wouldn't be too terrible if it weren't for the wind because snow totals, all, although we haven't had much this season, not all that impressive. Yeah, the snow totals weren't huge, Sophie. You know, you hear the word blizzard. There's the misconception that you're going to have these enormous volumes of snow. Well, generally we have between one and three inches in Siouxland, but as you traveled further north into Tyndall, South Dakota, that's a spot that had a little bit more, four and a half inches on the ground, three and a half inches in Dixon County for Concord, Nebraska, 2.8 inches in Sioux Falls, received a report of two and a half inches this afternoon in Neely, Nebraska, 2.4 inches in Vermilion, and in Omaha, just under one inch of snow today. Still waiting for an official measurement in Sioux City, but about an inch and a half to two inches appears to be what has fallen here in the Sioux City metro. Here's a look at some of those peak wind gusts today. Now, this is the big issue that we've had outside that terribly strong wind from the northwest. And you can see that as we go through next week, things will stay pretty quiet until Tuesday afternoon. That's when we may have the arrival of another significant snow system and that would provide us with greater amounts of snow but again the details a little sketchy on that but that being several days out but sling will definitely keep you informed of you will keep us posted and uh, if these nighttime temperatures hold on we might not lose all the snow that fell this time no i think at least it should stick around through christmas day sophie makes some people happy all yeah. right thanks a lot scott well for weeks cone park has been making snow and getting ready to open up this afternoon a few extra inches were added of course putting into question if people would show up to sled on the park's opening day they did 80 people were signed up today but only 30 made it out to the park because of the warmer temperatures this season as recently as yesterday the ice skating rink still isn't ready so tubing was the only activity offered so we have a blizzard today which we were not quite expecting but i mean it's new snow is always a good way to start our season so we've had a few people come out hopefully we'll see more out here today but it's kind of just a fun way to start the christmas weekend to just come out and start tubing you can purchase tickets if you'd like on the cone park website that is coneparksucity.com the park says they will remain open weather permitting through the spring well, health officials tonight asking people to limit the number of their holiday gatherings. How some Iowans are finding ways to see family and still exchange gifts this holiday season. Coming up next. The pandemic has caused many people to change their plans this Christmas season. Those plans mainly involved not going where they originally planned to. But there is one exception. Roger Riley found that people are holding many meetings up at rest stops. I'm at the top of Iowa Welcome Center and Rest Stop north of Mason City on I-35. This holiday season, it turns out that this building is more than just a restroom stop for some families. So we're still going to spend Christmas by ourselves and uh, Katie and her family and David and his family also live in the Minneapolis area. So they'll be doing the same thing uh, that we're doing. We just won't be together. For Dean and Mary Kanegi of Marshalltown, it was a chance to meet their daughter. Katie Peterson from the Twin Cities. We're going to be at home this year. Just the four of us, my husband and two boys. We're staying at home. This is the only traveling we're doing is to meet my parents here at this rest stop. But when you meet at a rest stop, there's not a whole lot in the way of entertainment. Just a chance to spend some time together in the lobby and maybe look at some pictures on the phone. Also, it was a time to exchange some gifts and get some goodies from Grandma. Um, I did a bunch of baking for my grandsons because I have a surprise. We have families coming from all directions with, uh, say, Marshalltown or Cedar Rapids and Minneapolis and Ames, Iowa and Minneapolis. And it's just a great halfway meeting spot for families. It's been very emotional. We, we miss each other and we haven't been able to see each other much this year. Well, at the top of Iowa Rest Stop, it turns out, is a place where families can gather, even if it's only for a short time. And we'd like to share some holiday greetings from the servicemen and women from the 185th. Hi, my name is Special Shea Gallus, and I'm a wheeled vehicle mechanic attached to Bravo Troop 1 113th Cav. And I'm from Remsen, Iowa, and I just want to say Merry Christmas to all my friends and family back home. Stay safe. I love you. My name is Specialist Keegan Staub, and I'm stationed here at Camp Bonsdale, Kosovo. I want to wish my family and friends back home in Hubbard, Nebraska, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. My name is Captain Alexander Keller. I'm with Bravo True 1st 113th Cav. My hometown is Sioux City, Iowa. I want to wish a Merry Christmas to my wife, Natasha, my daughter, Fiona, and my sons, Ian and Connor. Merry Christmas. 
and we thank them for their service. The Great Plains Athletic Conference announcing their top players of the year today, and we'll tell you what these players did to stand out this season coming up in sports. Ashley Scoggin, she gets fouled and she gets the basket to boot. That'll cut into that lead, but Purdue is just too strong. Nebraska drops three straight with an 83-72 final. And actually, there's more basketball on the horizon. Some of our college wow. teams, the Iowa, Nebraska, Iowa State, they're not playing today or tomorrow, but a couple of them are playing on Christmas, so that's kind of fun. Okay, something for people to watch at home. I'm assuming that'll all be at least yeah, online. Yeah, it'll be on TV. You can watch <laughs> these things pretty much, you know, just Google it. You'll find it out. All right, thanks a lot. And we will check in for one final look at the forecast. First, take you outside right now in Siouxland. Well, as you mentioned, Scott, some people getting their wish for a white Christmas right. because uh, at least there's a dusting on the ground, there's so it snow. has covered up some of the grass. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, just enough to uh, provide us with a white Christmas here in Siouxland, so that's some good news. But make sure that you are being careful if you do need to travel tonight. You can see that we have a continuation of that blizzard warning. It lasts until 9 o'clock. Some sunshine on the way for tomorrow, but it is still going to be very cold. 16 for the high. Things get better on Christmas Day, 39 and sunny skies. All right, thanks a lot, Scott, and thank you for joining us. We'll both see you back here tonight at 10. Until then, have a great night.